what it's going to be like. Are we going to stand and be able to say hallelujah, or are we going to fall to our knees and be silent right before the Lord? Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to come to this place where so many places around the world are hiding to worship you, so many people. Lord, we don't know how much longer we will have these freedoms, but we should embellish them and come before you every day. 24-7. We ask that you will empty each and every one of our hearts right now of self and fill us of you. That, Lord, not my will be done here, but thy will be done here through me. That you will speak through your empty vessel and that your vessels here will be filled from you. We ask you this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The scripture reading for today is Lamentations 521. Turn us back to you, O Lord, and we will be restored, renewed our days as of old. Before the Lord can turn back to us, we must turn back to him. The title of this, of this sermon is God America's only hope. Our country needs God. So many times I have seen that signs, whether it be on Facebook or whether it be in an email or in a bulletin, a billboard, saying, and asking God to bless America. I believe it's time that America gets on its knees and blesses God. Amen? Amen? The average age of the great civilizations in the world was an average of 200 years. Be believe this is true, America is now living on borrowed time. America is a sick nation. Since 1960, there has been prayer in the Bible removed from our public schools. 560% increase in violent crimes. More than 400% of illegitimate births. A quadruple in divorces hitting all Christian churches as well as our own, the SDA. There has been single parents popping up everywhere. God, when he created Adam and Eve, he created a family. A family is a mother and a father. 200% increase in teenage suicides. An average drop in SAT scores of 75% in our high schools, students that are taking them. We have become a nation where crime and criminals have more rights than victims. Wh victims, I see it every day on the news, are being slandered and they're looking into the victim's past. Meanwhile, the criminal is getting praised. It, it's, they're making movies after the criminals nowadays. You know, uh, TV movies. Uh, and, like I said, the victims are being thrown all across newspapers and the TV. Evil is called good nowadays, and good has become evil. This is in the Word of God telling us in the end times, which we are in. 
we have become a nation where the snail daughter, and I was going to have a, a picture for you, but I didn't get to fit, fit it in before I sent this to Pastor Phil, but they have endangered species for any animal out there except for human life. The baby in the mother's womb no longer counts. But again, if you have a rare snake, we have to preserve it. If we have a rare snail, we have to preserve it. We have said clearly about our character, it doesn't matter anymore what character we have. And by doing so, through the decades, we have put politicians in the office that their character has not amounted to anything. Now, I'm not attacking Democrats, Republicans, and this ain't a political thing. I'm not running for office here. But it, we can see that our government, that might have been a thousand people, are now a major government that are hundreds of thousands involved. Czars, you name it, they have it. We are a nation marked with sexual revolution, spiritual rebellion, and our morals have regressed, even in people known as brothers and sisters and Christians their morals had regressed. It's like people used to ask me, how do, can you go out and work in the world Monday through Friday and, be, and, and it doesn't affect you? you know? And again, I'm talking about America only because this is our great country, America. I predict to them that America is going to be conquered not from without, but will crumble from within. We are not going to be killed with homicide, but we're going to be killed as suicide. We need to make a change now. We need to turn back to God. It's, it's kind of hard that I'm talking to brothers and sisters here that know what we need, that are on their knees, and it's the world and the lukewarm Christians, some with us, some in other churches, that need to hear this word, need to hear that we have to get back on our knees again and pray for this great country. America's biggest problem is not inflation, interest rates, budget, not even crime. Her biggest problem is sin. I remember my mother and father telling me as a child that I am supposed to learn from my examples of my failures or other people's failures so that I don't go down that road. We heard in uh, the children's Bible, or children's story that when mommy said, don't ride down the road, it wasn't because she was trying to hold something back from you. She was trying to prevent v v Vicky from getting hurt. We are supposed to follow God. We're supposed to listen to our parents. America's greatest enemy is not Iraq, Iran, North Korea, Afghanistan, or even Russia. America's greatest enemy is herself. America's biggest threat is not nuclear explosion or terrorism, communism, or even humanism. America's biggest threat is God. As I was saying, we're supposed to learn from things. In the Old Testament, Israel, when they turned their back on God, they went into captivity. They've lost their freedom, and they started worshiping idols and gods. That's what this country's turning into. People are worshiping idols. Even in the Christian home, there's something in that home that people are worshiping other than God.
We need to give our complete self over to him. America has been known for years that we are the land of the home and the brave. This home is in critical condition. We need mouth to mouth resuscitation from God to stop, close our mouths for a minute and listen to him. And unless something is not changed, we are going to cease to be the land of the free and the home of the brave. It's already started. Our Constitution is being violated. We're told that we're no longer allowed to bear arms, and yet godly men and women that created this country, that built this country, our forefathers, they were armed not to hurt somebody, but to protect our own families. The criminals are going to have all the weapons, and ours are going to be in the government's hands. We're to see America used to focus and root themselves and be rooted in God. But we have lost our morals. And we are far from where we once were. We are far from where we were. One thing is where we were as far as a nation and a group. The other one is individually where we once came from, from being rooted in the Lord. Our only hope for survival is revival. Revival is us turning back to God, us praying for our families, us witnessing. We have a great uh, Bible workers here doing Bible studies, and I want to thank each and every one that's serving in any capacity, our teachers, uh, you know, teaching the Word of God, or if they're in public school, living the, the Word of God where people will see that. And I thank you all. How can we bring this nation back to God? Restoring the country back to God will take country worldwide revival with men and women. I remember a couple years ago, a Christian organization said, maybe it was 10 years or more, that they were holding hands across a couple states and praying for this nation. We need to not just do that, but take our spiritual hands. Because this war is not Republican against Democrat, uh, the people against the government. This is a spiritual war that we are fighting. And the only way for us to win is to be obedient to God, return back to him, and get on our knees, and step out and witness to someone. A lot of people say that witnessing, oh, I can't do that, I can't talk to anybody about God. If you can sit there and talk about your children or your grandchildren to somebody, if you can tell stories to your children and grandchildren, you can tell stories about Jesus. And by doing that, and us starting in our homes, that's how we start turning this country back to the godly country it once was. I don't believe we're known as a great country anymore. I believe that we're known as, as a joke to the rest of the world because we sit there and we say we have godly standards and we do just the opposite. We need to pray for our leaders, even though we may not agree with them or maybe because you know, they don't look like they're possibly Christian leaders whether they say they are or not, and I'm talking every branch, all the way from the president all the way down to your little committee man or whatever it's in your neighborhood or your town. We need to pray for all of them. We also need Christian men and women to step up and take those positions as well. The difference between uh, church and state was to mean the state was not to rule the church and tell the church what to do. It was not to keep the church out of the state to show how God wants everything to be ran. The United States was founded by a great 
God-fearing Christian men and women who wrote the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence using biblical principles. As we noticed lately, all of them since 1960, they have been taking the Ten Commandments off of courthouses. They have taken things out in the scenes at Christmas time away from, from public places and placed other things, idol-worshipping things, in our schools, teaching our children in our public schools everything but God since he's been removed. America doesn't need new prophets. It doesn't need uh, new biblical uh, pathetic messages. We have all the messages. Alan White shows us what the messages are for us. Uh, the Bible teaches us what pathetic things, and it's a manual to life for us how to live. But in order to restore America back to the blessings of God, we need, again, national revival and correct collection of prayer, joining spiritual, holy hand, holding hands across this nation, allowing God to lead us once again. In the United States, if the United States is to turn back to God, we must first do what the Bible tells us to do. We must put our full faith and trust in God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus has told us these were the two major commandments, that we were to love God, he'd be our only God, and that we're to love one another. I remember reading several times and stuff where, and people say it at work all the time, well, you keep your friends closer and your enemies closer than your, your friends. So if you're going to keep your enemy closer, that's good for us to sit down and say, do you need any prayers and pray for them? I've, I've known, I'm sure people here have. I've gone to work and people just flock to me all day long. I need a prayer for this. I need that. Uh, I emailed Chris about a young lady that was rushed out of uh, work uh, Friday because her, her daughter, which has been having seizures, had a major seizure, and they don't know whether she's going to make it or not, and she's going through a lot of tests. So, you know, what I've learned is people that don't know the Lord or roughly about them don't know how to pray. I always have people coming to me and asking to pray. We have to become a praying nation. Because I've had people, and I've mentioned in other sermons, that I've sat down and prayed with them, but the next time I said, now you know what you want and what you want to ask for. You pray with me. And I let them pray. America must stand on Christian ideas of liberty and justice for all. We have gone backwards with that, that, that uh, you're, we're almost like Europe, where Europe said to us, said to people, you're guilty until you find you're innocent. Here we used to be innocent until proven guilty. But nowadays it's almost like just the opposite. And the ones that they're saying that's guilty are the victims. They're finding a way why the victims are causing people to rape them, rob them, beat them, kill them, whatever they do, you know, and where we should be turning around and saying, well, why is the victim doing this? I mean, why, why is the criminal doing this? In bringing back America to God, we must stop fighting and causing division among ourselves as a nation. There was one thing in New Jersey, when we lived in New Jersey, that uh, a friend of mine that was a different denomination than SDA was telling me that a group of churches from all different denominations took this one weekend, got together, and got on their knees and prayed for our nation and prayed for each other. We need to do that. We need, among our own churches, but even reach out to other churches and pray for what their needs are as well.
a godly nation must care about its people. And a godly America must stop trash talking. I've noticed in the past 10 years or more of elections that people that are running, no matter what stage it is, from the presidency down or up to the presidency, are trashing one another. And again, like I said, I'm not here to attack any one of the parties because they're all guilty of it. I heard a lot of trash talking on the debates in this past election for the presidency. Trying to do, destroy one another's reputation and the person that they're running against. Just to get elected or re-elected. These so-called leaders we have in office today and that have run got involved in dirt, dirty trash talking in debates to destroy each other's lives. Only to gain a vote and, again, be elected or re-elected. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but a politician in politics who cuts down on another American citizen, even uh, that cuts down another American citizen, how can they say that they are for we the people? How can they say they're going to represent us if they can cut down our own brothers and sisters that are running against them? I believe the truth is they don't care about themselves, about these people. They just want to be elected. For once, I'd like to see someone in politics turn down doing a debate in the name of God and say that they will not stand and tear down another American citizen because they want to become whatever office that is. American pol political debates have caused wars all around the world. They have caused slander. They have slandered one another and slandered other countries. And after it's all over, and whoever gets in office, it never shows who was the best person for that office by trash talking. The truth is this nation and how it's to turn back to God needs a moral, strong Christian leadership in this country. Christians that I've seen in office professing to be Christian, still tearing down other, other American people. We need people who care about people. We the people. Amen? Next, in becoming a nation, turn back to God. And I'm rubbing that in because we need to turn back to God. And we need to stop looking down our noses at people that are less fortunate than us. I have seen in the past decade families standing on corners, living in cardboard boxes. Never before growing up that I ever seen that in America. I've never seen where uh, American soldiers come back other than Vietnam and be treated so badly by their own people, by their Americans. People that are begging Father's begging for food for their family. And some families, because the father is not making the money they used to, have walked away. Or mothers, that father, husbands have walked away because they can't stand, that they can't support their families the way they were. We are to pray and get on our knees. We are not any better than anybody else. We need to get back to God. We are a nation divided because of violent crimes, because of abortion, because of same-sex marriages. I've talked through the years with friends and acquaintances that either their wives or their girlfriends or even them themselves have gone through abortions. And they feel so bad 
the, mostly the rest of their lives. But I'm here to tell you, God forgives you. Don't do it again. Amen? Yes, God will forgive them. We are also a nation divided because of greed. We have seen in the past that we can print out money faster than we can spend it. That we've given, and not just this presidency, but the one before it, that they were going to bail out this car dealership, or they're going to bail out this bank, and stuff like that. And many people come and see how greedy companies are, they're raising prices, like the gas, how, how, uh, how uh, all these companies that were bailed out, all their executives got the money, and the people are out on the street. So many people, other than our normal investments for retirement, are even stopped spending money because they don't know what the economy will be tomorrow. But we need to spend money to keep the economy going. This doesn't mean just Joe Plummer, as they used in the election, but like you or I, but it also means that the politicians, the president, the, the rich companies need to put money back in. If not, people are going to constantly be out of work because there will be no money to pay them. So for the workforce, we need to spend to keep this economy going. I do understand that the belts are a little tighter now than they were 10, 15 years ago, but we still need to spend. The biggest trouble with greed is that it stops us from giving to the people that need it. It stops us from giving to the poor. It stops us from giving to the single mom that has two or three kids and needs our help, or a, or a, 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 a man that's a single dad or a dad that's lost his job. You know, it, it, it stops that, the children the starving, you name it, you can go on, the list is so long. But we stop giving because, well, you know, we need this or we need that. We need to continue to give to further the kingdom and bless all his children. Selfishness comes into play, into the hearts of people that when you start, stop giving and you start saying, well, I've got to put extra money for this. And I'm not saying, you know, don't pay your mortgage or your rent or your electric bill. You know, we know there's a necessity there. But we're also told to give 10% plus offerings to God. I want to ask you, how many of you have an investment that gives back 90% after you invested 100% and only asked for 10. If there's one there, I want to sign up for it other than in God we trust. That's the bank we should be investing in. Are we, if we are to become a nation again that turns back to God, we need leaders from every walk of life. We don't need Carcass just Caucasian leaders, just Afro-American leaders, just Hispanic leaders. We need what heaven's going to be like. Everybody in there. And we need somebody that is not out for themselves, but out for each and every one of us. We even need brave men and women that have the guts to turn from either a gang style or, or a, a drug dealer or any, anyone that's in, in prison for something, and turn their life back to God. I was watching 3ABN, and uh, the, what Pastor has been talking about, and I might misspell, mispronounce this, the RUCO, and we had it on the film that you can get it for your, your TV, and we, we got one of them at Walmart, like they mentioned on the on the last two weeks on the, the clip we saw. And I was watching the 3 ABN, and there was this uh, Hispanic man standing up against the building in this small little Hispanic uh, town. And it could be anybody. It could be Caucasian or what. He just happened to be Hispanic. 
and uh, they took a shot right off the, around the building that was on the corner, and there was a great big tent. He was having a revival. People were coming from the neighborhood and places around to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and hear the message. This is what America needs to do. However, the part that I, I skipped was this pastor was a drug dealer right on that corner, right on that spot, 20 years prior, and served five years in prison and came out after accepting the Lord and got ordained. And now he's serving the Lord. Amen? I used to hear that uh, you have to grow up in the church as a child and this is how you become a pastor. You know, you do this in certain churches as I was a child. And oh no, why is that guy? He was in jail for two years or this one. I know he used to run around on his first wife. Now he has a second or whatever the situation is. And oh, how can they preach? And through the years, I realized and questions I have asked is that God uses your experience to help others. And that's what America is supposed to be. We're a melting pot. You know, we're not all just one color or one, one religion or one uh, whatever. You know, we are just like what heaven's going to be. This church is exactly, when I look around, what heaven's going to be like. You know, I see people from every walks of life, of every, whether, whether they're a janitor up to there's some kind of uh, professor or some or doctor. And yet, each one of us come together, love each other equally, and love the Lord. We, the people of the United States of America, are part of a great nation but we are divided among ourselves. We cannot stand when we're divided. The Bible tells us also a house divided will not stand. Abraham Lincoln also stated a country divided cannot stand. And where do you think he got that from? Yep, the Bible. In one part of America's Pledge of Allegiance, it says one nation under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. We need to return back to that. If we are to become a nation blessed by God, a nation that prospers financially with our health in every area of walk of life, then we must put God first in our hearts, souls, and minds. The Lord waits with open arms, just as he waited when Peter came out to him on the boat, ship, whatever it was, on the water. He kept his eyes on the Jesus. And I believe the minute he turned away, he was within hugging distance of the Lord. He was so close, and yet he turned away. We need to know God is right in front of us with open arms, no matter what we're going through, you know, it, it could be anything. It could be uh, young people having problems with bullies. It could be, uh, you know, a senior having problems getting a ride to the doctors. It, it could be anything that we need to seek on the Lord, pray about it, and as Americans, we should offer to help. I know there's in several different churches, including this one that I've been to that's SDA, Rock Hall is one of them, and I believe Forest Grove, that there's some senior women taking older men and women to their doctor's visits and stuff like that. That is their ministry. This is what America is all about, helping one another. The Lord is waiting with open arms. Our God is still the God of miracles. He's healed today. He can heal a broken heart. He can heal a wound. He can heal whatever you're going through. Amen? How can God help you if you turn from Him? When you shut down all communications to Him. Yes, He is waiting 
with open arms. There are people from across this great nation turning back to God, from California to New York, from Florida to Mississippi, from Washington, even in the White House. There are people turning back to God. When I say the White House or mention a building or something like that, it doesn't mean just the president's in the White House. There might be other people that are coming back to God that work on the staff, other family members. So people are coming back to God. However, there will come a time, as it is written, that uh, people are going to have itchy ears to hear things that they want to hear in doctrines and that they're going to leave the church. It's, it's our job to make sure that doesn't happen by witnessing, befriending somebody. There are some churches here that I've seen where somebody comes in and they have to be here several weeks or months before somebody greets them. I know that wouldn't happen in Dover first, but I've seen it in other churches, SDA as well. Standing on the Bible, standing on the roots of our forefathers, worshiping God and praying to him collectively about restoring our nation, asking God for revival for our nation, looking for ways to turn this nation back to God. Revival has many definitions in the church. Revival can be a camp meeting, a, a tent somewhere. A revival can be you talking to your next door neighbor. Uh, some people in the church here have Bible studies with people with different, different denominations and stuff like that. But we go with the truth. God will give you a, a revelation on how to speak eventually of possibly the Sabbath keeping or, or other parts that are of the truth that perhaps they're not learning, or God will lead them to their beliefs, to what, they, what he has for them. We have a long way to go, yet possibly a short time to do it in. We need this nation and the world to know about Jesus, and not before he shows up in the clouds and we, everybody sees them and say, ah, oh, well, I meant to. I thought I had time. We must do it now. We must seek. Seek the Lord in prayer so we know what to say. Again, I see signs and hear people say, God bless America, and I'm, I'm about to close. And... It's a time that our country, and I've, I've, I've read this in emails of friends that have sent me stuff uh, that are friends of mine from other SDA churches around the world and around the country, and they say we need awakening. We need to be shooken. Sometimes Christians get so comfortable in that pew, so comfortable in life, you know, that, oh yeah, you know, I talked to one worker at work or or a family member, and, you know, they don't want to hear any of this God stuff or this Jesus stuff. What are you, a Jesus freak? That's my time we used to call people Jesus freaks. And, you know, this religion thing, we don't need that. And we had to explain to them that Christianity is not a religion. The world calls it a religion. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle to strive to be like Christ. That is how America is going to be a great country once again. So it is time for America to wake up and start blessing God and seeking his face. And then, and only then, God will bless America. When Israel turned away from God and was in captive, not until they, were, they turned around and started to be more like Daniel, as we should, at least two or three times a day, get down on our knees. You have a lunch break. Pull yourself over to the side. Pray, you know, offer to pray to somebody. But the bottom line is we need to fall on our face more often than we do. There is no one that prays 
as much as Daniel did in our time today. And even Daniel thought that he didn't do enough in prayer. So let us first pray with ourselves, one-on-one -on -one to God and with our family. Let's make this country the great country that God blessed it with in the beginning. Thank you. Stand as we sing our closing song.